Until the first blows fell, no one was really convinced that Penn Station would really be demolished or that New York would permit this monumental act of vandalism against one of the largest and finest landmarks of its age. Any city gets what it admires and will pay for and ultimately deserves. And we will probably be judged not by the monuments we build, but the monuments we destroy. Ada Louise Huxtable. One of the worst things that's happened in New York's history is the loss of Penn Station. Penn was so traumatic because this was something that belonged to everybody and that people felt was so beautiful and that they were so proud of that they just took it for granted and felt that it, you know, it couldn't possibly be torn down. Could you tear down the Grand Canyon? And then it was, and they put this really disgusting rabbit warren in its place. How tragic, how sad that so many Americans will never know what it was like to arrive in New York uh, for the first time in your life at Penn Station. It was spectacular. If you had never been to New York before, you came into the city for the first time, and you came out, and there you were in this breathtaking, man-made, wondrous architectural place. Vincent Scully says that we used to come in to New York like gods when we came into Penn Station. Now we come in to the present Penn Station like rats. It was one of the worst things to happen to an American treasure, not just in New York, but in the whole country. Pennsylvania Station, the greatest architectural monument of the Imperial Age of Rail, had stood for more than half a century at the corner of 7th Avenue and 33rd Street in New York. When, in the spring of 1961, the financially troubled Pennsylvania Railroad announced plans to tear the magnificent structure down and replace it with a high-rise glass and steel office tower and sports facility, hoping it would bring in more money. Though some voices were raised in protest, the coalition of architects, writers, and historians who tried to stop the demolition could do nothing to save Penn Station from the Wreckers Ball. And two years later, on the morning of October 28, 1963, the demolition began. It would take more than three years in all to pull the great stone structure down. One by one, the enormous Doric columns, winged eagles, and granite angels that had ornamented its facade were cut down, carted away, and dumped in a foul-smelling swamp in the New Jersey Meadowlands. It is inconceivable that Penn Station was destroyed, demolished for um, one of the, the sorriest uh, replacements that one could ever imagine. Everything about the ambition of Penn Station and of the great railroad stations expresses the kind of power that had been concentrated in New York. The loss of it was a sad commentary on the ideology of modernism, the belief that new is better, the belief that modern efficiency or that the profiting from new construction is an adequate replacement for the traditions, the heritage, and the real meaning of places in people's lives. The loss of Penn Station seemed to many an irrefutable confirmation that the age of rail had come to an end and that the age of the automobile had triumphed. And in many ways, it had. But more than most people understood at the time, the destruction of Penn Station had marked a crucial turning point in the life of New York City. It's when that comes down um, that a sense of sacrilege uh, really uh, uh, activates people. It's destroying the past. It is symbolic of the triumph of the auto era over the old uh, interconnected mass transit operations. 
it generated for many people a different attitude about the new. You know, maybe the tradition of the new, you know, wasn't something that we should celebrate so uncritically. I think what was gained was even more important than what was lost, and what was lost was, of course, one of the last really magnificent uh, Beaux-Arts constructions in terms of design and space and material and, and architectural quality. That was lost. What was gained was an enormous groundswell, popular groundswell for preservation, that not everything was expendable and that some things were worth a struggle, that you had to find uses, you had to find ways to keep the character and the quality and the continuity of a city. It went far beyond actually losing a station. It really was a sense of what is the city and how do you have that resonance really uh, that you get from the past that makes the city rich and real and a rewarding place to be, that it, it isn't sterile, it isn't the product of building by the bottom line, which of course so much construction is. Nobody seems to care about New York, except for those of us who live and work here. And we, who do care, believe the time has come to put a stop to the wanton destruction of our greatest buildings put a stop to wholesale vandalism. It may be too late to save Penn Station, but it is not too late to save New York. Jane Jacobs and the Action Group for Better Architecture in New York.